What's up, everybody? I hold shift back with you again, and we've got another patch reaction to go through. Well, as most of you know, this has been a long weekend of a lot of hit scan. And I will give the credit, there were some tunes that happened in the middle of the weekend. I was afraid that we were going to be dealing with a buggy and very hit scan dominant game for three days, but we got some adjustments, we got some bug fixes, so kudos. Now, this bit of video is going to be a little bit different than my normal videos. It'll be a little bit longer, and I want to go through the patch in a little bit more detail on my reactions, what I think is good, what I think is bad, and what might need to change, or at least need to be considered. My first reaction on the patch is, well, I'm not the biggest fan. Individually, as a competitive-minded player, I really enjoyed the fun and the skill that came with being able to point, calculate, click, and then outplay your opponent based on the projectile-based warfare. This patch has just turned into a point-and-click adventure. Most notably, with the auto rifles, burst rifles, and SMGs, it's turning into a hold mouse one adventure. The revolver has been a lot of fun, I will say that much, as you'll notice in the very beginning of this game. I use a lot of it because it's purple, first of all, and headshots hit for a ridiculous amount. That thing is a freaking hand cannon. But I do very much so miss the projectile-based gameplay that we had. Yes, it was a lot of poke and peek, poke and peek, poke and peek. But it's, uh, I don't know, I just liked it more than what I'm getting now, which is just... Run at your opponent, hold W, hold mouse 1, and then if you get the DPS done more than your opponent, you win the fight. So, I, I, I don't know. I'm, hit scan, I, you know, I get it. I'm going to go with the rest of this video. I'm just going to let you know. I'm going to base the assumption that hi has committed themselves as a development team and saying hit scan will be in this game, like it or not. Interesting bug there, by the way. I don't know if you guys noticed, but I had two ammo, and it had me at one, and then went back up to two again. Interesting. Don't know where that came from. So, we're going to base this whole video off the fact that we assume that Hitscan will stay in the game. So, how do we make Hitscan viable? First and foremost, I know a lot of you that are watching this are probably pretty upset with the addition of Hitscan. And especially, how crazy the weekend was with them putting it straight to live without a lot of testing. And I want to make one thing very clear. You need to understand that hi res in all of its games, uh, even including this one, before this one and up including this one, have been very dedicated to the principle that we are going to test some extreme things during our alphas and betas to see and make sure that our game and our ideas will be able to fit more complacently into place. So yes, the hitscan numbers were ridiculous to start. It made hitscan still dominant. They were tuned down, in my opinion. They are still too high. But here's the thing that the hitscan brings to the game. The casual player. It brings the casual player back in. Speaking firsthand, I played with a couple of friends this weekend that up until they added Hitscan back in, were done with the game completely. And yeah, I know the reaction generally is, well, get good or don't play. But that's not the way that a company should be thinking, and not one at all that hi has thought in the past. So you have to give them that kind of mindset, that they're going to be trying some radical things. You just kind of have to go with it and give your reaction in a constructive way, which is what this video is going to be uh, kind of geared more towards. So let's talk more hit scan versus projectile. The skill gap obviously gets drastically reduced when anybody can pick up a weapon. There's no ammo counts. There's no real need to aim. You can just hold left click in people's face and eventually get a couple of kills. So the skill gap very much so caters towards the casual player. The biggest element and the biggest factor is simply that the hit scan weapons, again, when you don't have to worry about an ammo count, you don't have to worry about ever using projectiles. You can just sit there and spam your AR or your SMG for the entire game because it's valuable that way. Now, am I saying that ammo counts should be included in the game? No, I don't think so. I'm fine with the unlimited ammo. I think that element alone is something very unique and something that will make the casual player continue to play. They don't have to go and search and loot. It's all more about the kills and the frags. I like that. I'm okay with that. But let's just take a look at some of the weapons as we go through and why some are better than others. The assault rifle, a 30 round clip. It shoots 10 bullets per second and has a true DPS that is based off of the rarity scale. That rarity scale is a 100% at common, 110 at rare, 120, 130 at legendary. And I point this out because you're going to notice that there are a couple of weapons that don't follow this uh, ab abbreviated and promoted rarity chart that we were said we were going to be having for our weapons. And there are questions on my end of, well, why? Why is that not the case that every weapon follows that? But the AR, the thing about it is the DPS is okay. It's right in the middle of the pack at every level. But the problem is it's so confirmed full DPS because of how easy the shots are to hit. Now, the other thing that's very interesting about it is there's no real genuine spray pattern that I've come to find. It just the, After a couple of shots, the bullets just kind of get randomized and they go kind of whatever. And with the limited ammo 
and the length of the clip size, it literally turns into just hold M1 and hope and pray that your bullets connect more than your opponent. I don't like this. I don't like that because I would rather have there be a dedicated spray pattern that people who are committed to getting better at the game can learn, adjust, and make sure that the effective DPS of their weapon and their fights go up because of it, not just hold down left click, hope my shots connect more than my opponent, and then either win or lose the game based off of it. Now, the second weapon, the burst weapon, the burst rifle. The bloom between the three rounds is actually pretty okay. I actually kind of enjoy that little bit of a spread and having to pull the mouse down to try to hit all three shots. The problem is the DPS is still extremely high. It's 1680 at very at the very highest in legendary category. Even at the common values, if you're hitting all three shots confirmed over a second, you're going to be getting 1320 damage. That's in two full bursts. It shoots two per second. 660 per full burst. So if you're in someone's chest and you put two rounds into them, two burst rounds into them, that's a win right there. That's a little crazy. Now, granted, at range, the weapon does have some pretty mild fall off, and it is very difficult to confirm DPS at range because of that bullet spread. It's just one of those things that needs to be looked at, I think, just full out damage numbers. I don't want to see hitscan being the choice at range. I want to see projectiles being used at range or not at all. It just kind of promotes that whole everyone sits at mid-range and just kind of chips at each other until someone dies. The crossbow is the next one up, and this is interesting because this is the first weapon that we'll encounter that actually goes 100%, 120, 140, 160 by rarity. But the thing about it is, why the heck would I even use it even still? I, why would I not just use an SMG up close or a revolver up and close? The crossbow still feels really wonky, even with the rate of fire adjustment. It's up to 2.5 shots a second and has severe fall off. It's just, with the projectile, why would I bother using it? Why would I not just use an AR or a burst? The DPS is good, but it's not as good as the other weapons. 775 for a common crossbow versus the 1000 of assault rifle, 1320 for burst, 924 for heirloom. It's just, it's sitting near the bottom. It's actually, besides the slug rifle, has one of the lowest uh, DPS in the game at its common level. And that actually continues even at the 140% mark that it holds at the highest end. The 1240 at legendary is still not even as high as the hit scan weapons that are following the same pattern. So does it need more damage? I don't know. Maybe it just needs to be looked at. Something needs to be changed without a doubt. The heirloom rifles next up and man, I'll tell you the what the rate of fire is just kind of weird to me. It just feels strange. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's because it's like a, just a point and click adventure. How fast can I hit it? But then you do that and the accuracy goes all over the place. Even trying to pace out my shots after about the third, fourth shot, the accuracy just feels really random. I, my favorite heirloom that we ever had was heirloom day one of the game. I would love to see the heirloom feel more like that. Maybe it's the mid-range projectile weapon that the game needs. I, I don't know, but the heirloom rifle, this, it just feels so strange right now. And the accuracy feels kind of wonky. The rate of fire feels really strange. The next up is a revolver, a.k.a. the hand cannon. The thing that I enjoy about the revolver is this. It rewards headshots extremely nicely. And I think that's actually pretty awesome to try to promote people to hit for the head. Maybe this is a weapon that has a little bit more of a bonus modifier for headshot, but a little bit reduced body shot. I don't know, but the ability to quote unquote snipe with it right now at long range is a little silly, as you'll see actually coming up in this next clip. I'm using this this revolver to snipe at this mage on top of a hill. You, you'll see what I'm talking about when we get there. The DPS is decent. I just kind of wish that there was some kind of more reward to using it, because I think it is really strong, mostly because of it is its ability to have almost perfect accuracy at long range. So I would like to see that kind of be, I don't know, tailored a little bit differently, because it is supposed to be a close up and close personal weapon i don't know i don't know just thoughts out of my out of my mouth you know as we're getting them <laughs> uh shotgun is next up and golly i cannot figure out the shotgun to save my life right in someone's face the thing hits like a freaking truck i got one tapped earlier today by a purple shotgun when i had 1400 hp the shotgun hits for about 810 but he must have hit a handful of headshots because he was literally right on top of me like, literally was jumping over me and one-tapped me at about 1,400 HP or so. And by the way, this area right here, Hyrus, if you're watching, can you kind of adjust it? Because there's a lot of clipping that happens in those little planks and platforms. And I think it's a really cool area. But you get stuck on a lot of things in that area. It'd be cool to see it kind of opened up a little bit more so that it's a little smoother to move through. Just a little side point. But the thing about it is, if he's not right in my face, the thing hits for like 125 at Legendary. What? Can we maybe possibly tighten up the spread, but then reduce the damage just a bit? 
Because right now it just feels extremely lotto, and I have a hard time picking it up, and I would like to see it be a little bit more viable. The slug rifle, speaking of viability, is actually extremely viable, as you'll see in these, uh, these clips coming up. The long-range poke, I love. I love that it actually hits for the damage it hits for. I think that it's time to kill actually feels the best out of every weapon right now, and would, I would like to see the other weapons kind of get in line more with where the slug is. The headshots are still rewarding. The projectile speed feels good. Its accuracy at range feels good. It's hitting right where it should. This should be your long-range poke weapon. Up close and personal, the rate of fire really isn't high enough to win a fight against an SMG. And that's fine. I think that's good. I just think that it needs to be that long-range poke weapon. And right now, I, this is probably the best feeling gun in the game, I think, just overall. SMG, speaking of, let's get into it. This gun has an increase of rarity level by 18% instead of 10%. That means 156% bonus damage right now between common to legendary. I don't know where these numbers came from. And I'm interested to get a take of why the numbers are as they are, because the thing is still melting people. Here's the thing about it. I think if this weapon goes down to just the 10, 20, 30% increase for rarity, I think it's fine. The spread is still, I think, not terribly wild, but it still punishes you for you know, just holding it down. I, I don't know. I, I, it's one of those things that the things that I want to take a look at is the damage first and foremost. The rate of fire feels extremely fast, and maybe even the ammo count needs to be looked at. And in fact, just copy-paste that with all the, the hit skin weapons right now. I, I, I will get to that a little bit later in a minute here. And let's just talk about the sword for a second. I only got two letters for you. X D. The sword is just so bad, especially with all the hit scan being used right now. The hit detection on it feels terrible. I don't know what's going on with it, but I had a couple of sword plays earlier today that were not connecting at all while I was right in front of somebody. I would have rather have had my knife. I don't know what happened to it, but the fact of the matter is, with all the hit scan in the game, the sword is just not good whatsoever. Let's finish this out real quick, shall we? Uh, so, hit scan. Reducing the skill gap for sure, but here's the thing. If we can change up some of the values, I think, in the damage, but also the rate of fire and the ammo size, let's force people to add a new element of skill into their gameplay if this hit scan does stay, which I assume it will. That area, swapping weapons. I would love to see someone run out of clip and have to force themselves to use a second weapon. It doesn't matter what it is. Just have them have that skill gap. We have gloves for a reason. I would like to see that quick switch tech become a part of the game a little bit more widely across the population. I've been doing it a lot with Sniper Slug. It's a two-hit combo right now, which is super fun. But I would like to see that happen more with, like, the SMG. Make it, like, 25 bullets or just change the rate of fire. But I don't know. Find some way to make it so quick switching has to become a thing. If it goes from short range to mid range, I wanna see people having a uh, SMG first and then switching to an assault rifle. I think that sounds super awesome. I think it adds an element of fun to the game, utilizing that quick switch tech. I think that's something that could really uh, add again, that uniqueness, uh, I mean, again, Fortnite does that obviously, but it would add another element to the game that besides just spray and pray, which is currently what the game feels like. Legendary weapons as well, uh, well have become extremely unvaluable simply because of the hit scan DPS more than anything else. The only two weapons that are worse right now at the legendary level is the slug and revolver. And even still, the accuracy, because it's so good, it's actually con the confirmed DPS of those weapons still makes them more viable than every other legendary weapon on the table with the exception of the sniper rifle. That is literally the only weapon right now that I think is worth crafting. And if you're crafting your other weapons, if this patch stays as it is, you're probably making a giant mistake because the DPS is just not even comparable. Uh, but here's the thing. If you take a look at these hitscan weapons and the damage, the rate of fire, the clip size for all of them are taken down, I think the legendary weapons become a lot more valuable, without a doubt. I mean, the stone spear had a lot of value for a while. Actually, it had too much value for a while, but now it's just like, why would I use that burst over the burst of the burst rifle? I, I wouldn't. This is actually what it comes down to. So I think those need to be looked at. Things like the sniper rifle reload time maybe need to be increased a bit since it is taking two and a half to three shots if you're hitting headshots or not with the sniper rifle. I think the hunter, it needs to get some kind of a drawback increase uh, just flat out with the bow. It just takes too long to pull back. And then everything else is just kind of is what it is. It's just the fact that the hit skin weapons are so good right now. Uh, let's talk about the classes though. Obviously, right now, the Warrior is by far, I think, the best choice, simply because of the mobility uh, of the class, his ability to get in and out. I mean, all four of his uh, his kit's abilities are incredibly good, just because the hit scan, again, can shoot you down so fast, so the extra shield is great. Otherwise, even the legendary healing is fine, because if you do get in 
that green, that area into your health pool and you have an elongated fight, at least you have a chance to heal yourself back up. And of course, you can, can't deny the charge and the heroic leap. Uh, the Assassin really only has the only viable legendary weapon because of the lack of range poke with the exception of the slug rifle. So the sniper rifle, of course, is valuable there. Uh, but here's the problems with the other classes. Engineer, can we please, please make him a little bit more difficult? No, Not having self-damage on the firebomb is actually getting a little ridiculous for my for my taste. There's way too much self-spam. People throwing up a shield, throwing a firebomb on top of themselves when you're fighting them, and then just taking out their potion launcher and shooting at their feet. It's not fun. There's nothing fun about it. Doing it is not fun. Playing up against it is not fun. It's just kind of silly. The mage, wow. Let's just talk about mage for a second. Can you get some actual abilities for the mage? That'd be awesome. The wall and the catalyst are just absolutely, I think, at the most worthless level right now. That's really, if you're playing mage, you're just hoping and praying you get the big three in your legendary, the sword, the fireball, and the ice block. The wall just doesn't feel like it fits. It's too easy to get around. The catalyst, it doesn't really slow for that much. The damage is underwhelming. I don't know. Hunter, I think Hunter is probably the worst class in the game right now simply because of the bow not being very all that viable. But the biggest thing is the Hunter doesn't have any vertical mobility and everybody else does. Can we give like Hunter like the vine ability like that Grover has or something? I don't know. Something. The Hunter needs something. The abilities I think are fine. It's just the lack of vertical mobility. And then how about speaking of Hunter and Assassin, can we switch their passives? It doesn't really seem to make sense that the Hunter has the bonus... Uh, reload and swap speed when all you're doing is using your bow when the assassin needs that and on the flip side Does the assassin really need the bonus movement speed? I don't know. I don't think that's the case, but regardless that's been it for me I hope you guys have a good one. This has been a reaction video and again There's a lot of things that have to be considered the other things, you know I gotta leave this one more thing before before we go here. Can we not change things that aren't bothering people so much? And again, I don't mean to make this sound so aggressive, but the jumping while healing thing I, I, I didn't think that was a problem. I, I guess it wasn't intended, but fixing it created a new bug to where when you run into somebody while they're healing, that person's healing and armor gets uh, turned away. You, 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 they get stopped, which is uh, really, really annoying. But regardless, that's been it for me. I hope you guys got some reaction for me. Again, uh, keep in mind that high res is going to do what they're going to do. And they have a mindset. They have a development team that has the direction they want to go. They want to try things. This is an alpha test. And again, I know a lot of you can be like, well, stop hiding behind the alpha tag. high res has always been committed to trying wild and extreme things during their tests to make sure that things either do or do not work. And I think they've got the, kind of the idea that the hit scan right now is just way over tuned. So if you're out there watching, try to leave constructive criticism wherever you get the chance to put it on whatever medium you're using, whether that be Twitter, Reddit, or a video <laughs> like this. But I've been I Hold Shift. This has been a pleasure bringing it out to you guys. Hope to see you guys in the realm. And until next time, hope that you keep holding it down.